Hello, everyone. I'm N Wei Wu from National Chengkong University at Taiwan. Today, I'm going to talk about our project BWiFi, uh, which offers lightweight and fast Wi-Fi access in virtual machines. So firstly, uh, let's uh, introduce myself. I'm a new graduate from National Chengkong University at Taiwan. And previously, I was an intern of FreeBSD Foundation for improving wireless device driver. Also, I have contributed to FreeBSD and Linux Mac L211 hardware thing. And my primary interests are in kernel development and and wireless networking. So this is why I have been working on uh, BWiFi with my teacher, Jim Huang, and other contributors. So to begin with, we will talk about why do we need lightweight Wi-Fi access. We will cover some situations uh, that can benefit from having a lightweight Wi-Fi access. Then we will talk about our project, BWiFi, which is a lightweight solution for having Wi-Fi access. Then we will talk about the internal of BWiFi. And you might be surprised by how lightweight BWiFi is. And then we'll make a short comparison between BWiFi and the Mac L211 hardware thing, which is a Wi-Fi simulator in Linux kernel. Last but not least, we will talk about our future work and see how can we make BWiFi uh, faster and more lightweight. So first of all, why do we need lightweight Wi-Fi access? There are some situations that we would like to have wireless interfaces without a complex software stack. For example, for continuous integration, we would like to have a, uh, we would like to have wireless interfaces without a complex software stack so that it can reduce our cost and time for building environment. The other example is application which needs Wi-Fi connectivity. And traditionally, uh, setting up a wireless environment is not an easy job because it usually needs a complex software stack as well as wireless hardware. However, with VWiFi, we can uh, we use a more lightweight software stack, and we don't need a hardware because the Wi-Fi itself can simulate uh, virtual wireless interfaces. And the other example is uh, having a lightweight software stack make, makes it easier to be deployed into a virtualized environment. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll show you how easy it is to deploy a Wi-Fi into a virtualized environment. The last thing is uh, to reduce resource usage in virtualized environment. There are some situations that developer wants to test a wireless environment with lots of wireless interfaces. In these cases, uh, using a more lightweight software stack usually means uh, fewer resource usage like memory consumption. Actually, there is, a, not, there is a, already a, a Wi-Fi simulator in Linux kernel, which is called Mac L211 hardware sim. In the following slides, I will refer it as hardware sim for simplicity. The hardware sim involves a complex software stack. For example, for scanning process, it takes 2,675 function calls in the Wi-Fi stack. On the other hand, VOFI only takes 63 function calls for scanning process. This is why VOFI is a lightweight solution for having Wi-Fi access. So we've, we have mentioned that uh, why do we need a solution for having a lightweight Wi-Fi access. So it is, it's time to introduce our project VOFI. As you have already know, uh, VFI is a lightweight uh, wireless simulator which works with a smaller software stack. Actually, we don't implement all the AO2.11 protocol in VFI in order to offer just work wireless interfaces. 
some cases uh, we've already mentioned uh, don't need a full pack of L2.11 protocol. In these cases, having a just work wireless interfaces satisfy our need. Uh, the other thing is uh, VOFI is easy to be deployed to a virtualized environment, which needs only a little modification of VOFI. Uh, actually, VOFI has two uh, different behaviors depends on whether it is running on the host only or it is running on the VM. When running on the host only, VOFI is a lightweight alternative of hardware SIM. On the other hand, when running VOFI on a VM, it becomes a wireless version of Vertile Net driver. We'll cover why VOFI can provide uh, wireless interfaces while having the Vertile Net device as its backend device. So let's talk about running on the host only first. When running on a host only, VOFI is a lightweight alternative of hardware SIM. The figure uh, compares the software stack between hardware SIM and VOFI. And as you can see, hardware SIM works with both uh, CFG L211 and Mac L211. On the other hand, VOFI works with only CFG L211. And the software stack VOFI uh, works with is nearly the half of the hardware SIM. So this is why VOFI is more lightweight. And uh, the second behavior of VFI is r when running on the VM. When running on a VM, VFI becomes a wireless version of third IL net driver. It means it has the ability to communicate with external entity and fulfill inter v VM communication. And the reason why ver uh, we call uh, VFI as ver uh, wireless version of third IL net driver is because VOFI uses virtual net device as our backend device. However, compared with the, uh, the, the original virtual net driver, VOFI provides wireless interfaces rather than the Ethernet interfaces. So, uh, right uh, for now, you might be curious about the internals of VOFI. So, let's talk about it. Basically, VOFI is a CFG L211 for Mac driver. It means VOFI works with uh, CFG L211 as its Wi-Fi stack. And how does VOFI become a CFG L211 driver is by implementing the operations defined by CFG L211, like the figure shows. And whenever a user requests a scan, it ends up calling the VOFI scan uh, function, which is a sign to the CFG L211 OPS. The, thans, the same thing happens for the other operations like connect and disconnect. Uh, for CFG L211 drivers, CFG L211 delegates the management of L2.11 protocol to CFG L211 drivers and their firmware. This means most of the L2.11 protocol is implemented in at CFG L211 drivers and their firmware. And normally, uh, a CFG L211 driver and its firmware will, will implement all the L2.11 protocol. However, our VOFI implements only a small subset of L2.11 protocol. So this is why uh, VOFI is more uh, lightweight in management path. The other uh, the other feature for a CFG L211 driver is that CFG L211 drivers get Ethernet frames from network device layer. And normally, uh, a CFG L211 driver and its firmware or its firmware uh, will uh, encapsulate the Ethernet frames into L2.11 frames. However, uh, our VOFI transmits Ethernet frames directly without encapsulating them into L2.11 frames. And this is the secret why uh, VOFI can make use of root LNet device as our backend device. And this is also why VOFI is more lightweight in data path. Let's talk about more detail about data path. 
as we have already mentioned, uh, VFI get Ethernet frames from network device layer. And then the, uh, the behavior uh, different, is different. Beha uh, depends on whether VFI is running on the host only or it is running on the VM. When VFI is running on host only, it then sends Ethernet frames into another wireless interface in VFI. If you have ever heard of the VETH in Linux kernel, the behavior here is much the same as like in VETH. That is, a transmission for an inter interface turns out to be the reception of another, well, uh, another interface. And however, in our cases of VOFI, we're using the wireless interface. The second behavior is that VOFI is, uh, when VOFI is running on the VM, it then sends Ethernet frames into a virtual device via VertQ. And this is feasible because virtual device, a uh, virtual net device receives uh, Ethernet frames from its front end driver. Let's uh, let's see how data goes uh, when VFI is running on a VM. Here is the diagram that uh, the whole diagram is in a QMU process, which means it is a guest machine. First of all, a data application has some data to send. At Elan calls system call to let kernel handles the data. And the data arrives at system call interface, and then socket layer, and then protocols, uh, network protocol stack. At this time, the data has been uh, encapsulated in a spe specific uh, protocol header. In most cases, it's uh, the IP header. And then network protocols uh, layer passes the packet into the net device layer. And the net device layer pu uh, pushes the ethernet header in front of the packet and passes into the VOFI. And then VOFI uh, pass the ethernet, ethernet frames to the virtual net device via VertQ. So for now, uh, we're at the bottom of the QMU process. So let's see where, where are we at, at, at the viewpoint of the whole system. This is where are we at. We're at the bottom of the QMU process, which is virtual net device. And let's see what we have in host kernel space. We, uh, there are uh, tap devices and bridge device. And each of the tape devices is connected with, uh, uh, with a virtual net device in a QMU process. Also, each of the tape devices is mastered on bridge device. And with this setting, the two, the two QMU processes have been successfully connected. And let's see how, uh, how Let's see uh, when the virtual net device pass the Ethernet frames to the tap device. Then the tap devices and the bridge device will do L2 forwarding for us, so that the data can the, the Ethernet frames can arrive at the virtual net device uh, in in the other in the other QMU process. Then the data uh, uh, then the Ethernet frames arrive at the VoFi of the, the another uh, QMU process, then you can guess what's going on. The data application in the other QMU process finally gets the data from the other uh, data application in the original QMU process. So af uh, after talking about the data path, let's focus on the management path. CFGL211 involves the, uh, the operations within CFGL211 driver to satisfy a user, user's request. For example, uh, like we have already mentioned, uh, you, uh, whenever a user requests a scan, it ends up calling the VOFI scan, which is assigned to the CFGL211 OPS. And the other thing is 
Most, most CFGL211 drivers prepare and transmit L2.11 management frames in these functions. However, remember that VFI can only send Ethernet frames because it uses a virtual net device as its backend device. So, in this case, VFI needs to prepare and transmit Ethernet frames. So, how does VFI do, VFI do this is by converting the AL2.11 management frames into Ethernet frames. For example, this is the structure of AL2.11 management frame for scanning, pro, uh, scanning request. And how, uh, how VFI does this is by keeping the management frame body still, and then turns the AL2.11 MAC header into the Ethernet MAC header. And that's all, uh, not really. You can, uh, you can find that we have, uh, we have lost a field for uh, the MAC address. As you can see, there is an extra MAC address field in the AL2.11 MAC header. And in most cases, uh, this extra MAC address is, is to tell uh, what BSS we belong. So with only two MAC addresses in our Ethernet MAC header, we are not able to show the BSS that we belong. Actually, uh, we have come up with some solutions and we choose this solution uh, to keep UFI lightweight. The solution is that each wireless interface maintains a table storing the MAC addresses of all the other interfaces within the same BSS. So whenever a wireless interface receives a frame, it then checks whether the source MAC address is in our table. If it is, it means we're on the same BSS. If not, it means the sender is from the other BSS. So uh, we can drop the frame because the frame is not for us. The other thing I want to mention is that how do we identify whether the frame is a data frame or a management frame? The secret is in the, in the Ethernet MAC header, uh, the proto field. For data frames, we store ether type in the proto field like a, a normal uh, Ethernet frame. On the other hand, uh, for our management frames, we store length of the packet in a proto field. And the helper function ETH uh, proto is L23 uh, can identify whether the proto field is store, storing the ether type or it is storing the length of the packet. And the function return truth, uh, returns true. Uh, whenever the proto field is stored in the ether type, otherwise it returns false. So identify the frame type is fairly important because uh, we are we are processing our management frame in VWiFi, and we don't want our manage management frame to be passed to the network protocols uh, layer. And here we uh, so we can we can identify the management. Uh, the frame type so that we can dispatch our frame to whether the data path or the management path. Uh, actually, uh, we, have, we have already had some comparison between VFI and the hardware scene. And uh, so let's talk about other comparison between the two. Uh, first of all, uh, VFI is uh, has fewer uh, lines of code than in hardware thing. Uh, this is uh, good news because uh, VFI aims to be a lightweight uh, Wi-Fi simulator. The other example is that VFI is easy to be deployed into a virtual machine. Uh, uh, you, as you can, as you as you have already know. Uh, VOFI makes use of virtual net device and tap device and also the bridge device. So the only thing VOFI 
the only thing to port VFI into a VM guest is only a small modification of VFI itself. On the other hand, for uh, to port hardware sim to a VM guest is not an easy job because uh, it needs a dedicated uh, virtual device for hardware sim, as well as some uh, user program which are demos uh, to uh, for hardware sim. Uh, of course, uh, the hardware sim itself needs to be modified so that it can support virtual. Uh, the last, last thing is that uh, we use MIT license rather than the GPL license used by Mac L211 hardware sim. So that uh, to port, uh, porting VFI to other platform is much e uh, is much easier than the hardware sim. Okay, so finally we we can talk about our future work. Uh, the first thing, thing is to support multi queue for virt IO. Uh, so uh, it can reduce the lock con contention for uh, containing the uh, vert queue in VOFI so that uh, it increases the throughput for both transmission and reception. The other thing is to allocate dedicated pages for receive reception buffers so that we don't need to allocate memory each time uh, we re receive a frame so that it saves the time to allocate in memory and thus make VFI faster. And here is our repository and uh, uh, we welcome anyone who is interested in VFI join us and any question or uh, feedback uh, will be very precious for us. Thank you, everyone. Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, hey. um, have you compared the performance of uh, the Wi-Fi with uh, HWSIM? Do you have some numbers? Uh, actually, uh, we have did some comparison, but uh, uh, the uh, performance uh, different between uh, between the VWiFi and hardware SIM is currently not very uh, diff uh, It's not very uh, we were not uh, so. It's not very different from how we think when it comes to the uh, throughput of the data path because uh, the network protocol uh, stack is very heavy and most of the operations in uh, network uh, protocol stack takes a long time. So actually, uh, we have did some uh, performance tests, but it's not very different from how we think. Yeah. Okay, thank you everyone.